Welcome to micro communication course. So today we will learn a barrier diode. The barrier diode is nothing but what a barrier injection. Okay, barrier injection transit time diode or a barrier injected transit time diode. So here the name barrier diode. We say that it utilizes the injection as well as the a transit time delay properties of the minority carrier to produce a negative rays at a low micro frequency. Okay, that is about what we can say that injection and a transit time delay that properties of a minority carrier to produce a negative resistance at a lower micro frequency. So here, if you consider that there is no avalanche process here, only it has a what you can say that it has only the a barrier injection. So if you consider that a barrier diode, so because we say that it work at a low frequency, so that's why that barrier diode have a very narrow bandwidth there and it has a limited output power. Okay, limited output that is nothing but a few milliwatt. Okay, that is about a, a small output power, a few milliwatt. And we consider that this a barrier diode and this structure. So generally, it is about consists of a, a n layer and a metal here. Right now, we just show that n and these are the two metal. Or we have the various structures we can develop using the through the for the barrier diode here. Barrier diode it has a different structure. Yeah, we can say that p n a p here, or we can say that p n and a metal here, or we can say that P, N, B, P here, or we say that a metal, N, and a metal here. Okay. So these are about the generally that it diode. So P, N, P, P, N, metal, P, N, V, P, or a metal, N, metal here. Now these are about the various types of a, a barrier diode. So if you consider here a PNP material or metal and metal material. So now we consider that this particular region that is about a N region here. That N region is about connected to the a metal here. Now this this one. If you see that this N region is connected to the a metal one, N semiconductor. If you consider that a PNP here, so N is connected to P and P here. Okay, so likewise. The P and metal, P and VP here. So means we have the region here. Either N here, either N here, or either we have the N V. That is about the V region here. And that V region is used to drift the whatever the electron there through that particular region. And then it will be collected at the other end. And so that's why the generally we say that this is barrier diode. It is again work in a negative resistance region, and it will work at a negative resistance region for a given transit angle. Okay, earlier we say that a transit time. Just we say here about a a transit angle, and it is work in a transit angle from what a pi and a a twice pi. That is about a a transit angle. But approximately we are getting a 1.6 pi of the Optimum uh, the transit angle value. Okay. To learn how that barrier diode is going to work here. So for that purpose, we supposed to consider that one out of the structures. So one structure we supposed to consider. Right now we consider here that metal and metal now. Okay. Now this one is about a metal and metal structure here. Now in this case here, if you see that a n type semiconductor is connected to this. Two metallic contacts. This is the one the metal contact. And this region is about a large one. So doping concentration in this particular region is a uniform here. Throughout the N, it is about the uniform here. So here, when we apply the DC bias to the device there, so in that case, this particular contact is supposed to be considered as a positive. Okay. 
so we supposed to consider now the diagram now okay how we say that the bias is going about yarn okay now we supposed to apply okay so we buy right so in that case a reverse buy so in that case we supposed to consider that this one is about a, a diode is to work in a, a reverse buy okay so in that case this particular metal is going to be considered as a minus and this is going to be considered as a positive now for example right we suppose to use a bias now when we consider that when we apply the bias there then this particular metal contact will act as a positive and a negative there and a junction here this one is about a junction these are about a, a two junctions here. so this particular two junctions one junction is considered as a forward bias and another junction is going to be considered as a, a, a reverse bias which we say that for this for this particular case here so here when we apply the bias here so then this particular junction is called as a forward bias junction and this particular junction is called as a, a reverse bias junction this one metal and yarn metal and yarn okay so this one is about a forward bias here. And this one is about a, a a reverse bias. If the bias is now again consider here that whatever the we can say that a particular junction of here junction J1 and J2. If we further increase the bias, then what happened? That particular junction in the case it will reach some particular level that uh, when we further apply the bias. And that particular bias, so the yeah, it has some particular depletion region because the, this junction. So if that bias voltage is more than that particular depletion value, okay, then what happened? So it has some. Here we say that a profile that is about a depletion width, and this one is about a profile for the doping here, doping concentration at this particular junction. Okay, so this one J1. And this belongs to a j2 and this value we are getting it is about a q into nd so nd is nothing but what a donor concentration here and that w is nothing but the width of the a semiconductor so just if the bias voltage is increasing here then voltage across this particular junction at this if it is going beyond then so in that case the depletion width of the junction this particular junction here wt here so that will reach whatever the value of this depletion region of this whatever the junction j1 here so in that case particular case here so depletion width of this junction 1 and a junction 2 will will be reach at some when we apply some particular a bias there and that particular voltage at which this phenomena occur means worth the whatever we can say that a width okay the depletion width of the junction and reaches the depletion region of the junction one and ejection to there okay at that particular point or at that particular voltage that phenomena occur that voltage is called as a punch through voltage and that at that particular bias here okay so the width will be same there if again we increase the further voltage there, so in that case, this particular junction, because this one is the body plus, so this will be a widen here. And once this will be widened there, then a total width of the junction will be equal to the whatever the this one. N okay, this one is to be a consider here. So what you can say right now it is about a WT. And a total width of a junction is supposed to be a W right now. If we further increase the bias, so WT it increases and then WT will reach at the AW. Okay, so what we can say that we apply the bias, so WT is increases. Okay, so we have this W1 here. Okay, this one is about. So this will be reaches WT it increases so that it will reach to the AW1. Okay, or junction at J1 junction. So then again further increase the bias so then wt will reach at the 
a w here okay are you getting so just we supposed to consider that what particular bias we are applying okay so that w with 2 will reach at the w1 okay that uh, what the equal okay near near about uh, this particular w1 and if we further again increase the bias so then w2 will reach at the w this whole whole region will be considered whole the junction will be considered as that a particular width will be considered as the a w here so in that case that particular voltage is called as a a flat band voltage okay and w is nothing but the width of a, a semiconductor this one so we supposed to consider that a whole width of the semiconductor so which one is the width here so this one this one is about the width here and here at this junction there will be w1 there will so this one is w1 and this one will be w2 we apply the bias so w2 will reach to the w1 and again to further apply the bias so then that w2 will reach to the total w now and this particular bias here that bias voltage if it is greater than the punch through voltage so that we will get that a w here and if it is a less than that flat band voltage then in that case what will be the energy band diagram for this case here so in that case your field will be what initially it will be we say it is about a conduction band here sorry so this one will be a balance band here. So this way we supposed to draw like that okay so according to that if we consider the a energy band diagram of the reverse bias metals here so whatever the holes are generated here this one is about a hole junction generally we say here so then this one is about a junction j1 okay this one is about a, a junction j1 and this one that will will be large here at the a j2 so this one is about ev another case we say that this one will be a easy so this one is supposed to consider that as a e here and what will be the gap here so this gap is called as a q phi b phi is nothing but what we can say that earlier that is about the angle okay that what we say that for the given particular flat band voltage here okay so what will be the uh, timing okay required here and another case is about what we say that this region to whichever the junction here so this particular region is called as a q bb and this bb is nothing but what a breakdown voltage okay so that is about uh, sorry bias voltage what we are applying here and then then uh, we we supposed to consider that for a given particular junction if the dc bias voltage is greater than a punch through voltage punch through voltage means what a voltage that is to be applied so that the junction w2 will reach to the w1 okay that is about a, a punch through voltage okay that will be before the a flat band voltage so flat band voltage means what the w will be whole w when we apply further bias then this particular band will be a w1 we stop a w2 w2 will becomes a w that is about a, a flat band voltage if the dc bias voltage is greater than the vpt means w2 will be w1 okay reach to the w1 and then not greater than this vfb there then in that case we will get the that particular energy band diagram so in that case so here q we will be that uh, particular region that ez and ev belongs to what that is about a q phi b okay so means what we can say that whatever the voltage we are applying to the device if the voltage is superimposed on this dc bias there in that case a positive half cycle of the ac voltage in at that positive half cycle additional holes will be injected from the metals into the a semiconductor okay so here from the metal to the semiconductor so how it will be looked like okay 
so now for that purpose we need to learn about the whatever the wave forms so now this one is about a pac i suppose to consider that this one is about a wave form this one is about a pi by 2 this one is about a pi then twice pi okay then thrice pi here then 3 pi by 2 okay so likewise this one is about a wave form now then we supposed to consider the a current point this one is about i this one is about vs so in that case when the voltage if positive half cycle of the ac voltage additional holes and whatever the holes are there because earlier we said that at the junction there will be holes holes will be injected in the n region so in that case there will be a current will be a maximum at the positive half cycle that is called as a injected current so everywhere wherever we have the positive half cycle and that current injected current will be a, a maximum there because holes injected through the n region so hole injection will increase exponentially with the what we can say that a applied voltage here and that's why there will be a maximum peak at the whatever the rf voltage again that holes move through the semiconductor and then current will be induced in the external circuit so in that case that current propagating through the external circuit okay here we say that will be increase exponentially okay and that will be flat throughout the whatever the we have the a negative bias so like so this one will be a injected current okay so this one is supposed to be considered as a injected current so likewise so this one is about a injected current here so here we say that so injected whole current okay so this one is about injected whole current and this about a current is to the external circuit okay so this one is about injected current and this one is to goes to the external circuit so injected whole current and current induced in the external circuit here you can see here okay this one so in that case that holes are injected through the uh, this particular junction at the page of angle of what where we have the pi by 2 okay at this particular pi by 2 so more number of holes are injected so that's why the current will be a maximum here again if you consider that the so ac voltage and this particular induced current that page is nothing but what move from what a pi by 2 to a pi here okay so in that case holes absorb the energy from the ac field here so that's why we can say that the ac voltage and induced current are in the phase from pi by 2 to the a pi here. and then we will get that the output here at a from page pi to a twice pi so in that case ac field absorb the energy from the holes here so that's why we will get a maximum ac power across the width of the a semiconductor region and that's why we can say that a more number of injected charge more number of injected carriers in this particular region are collected across this particular a junction here before end of the a cycle so this one is about the end of the cycle here and if you consider that what will be the transit angle the transit angle here if you consider so it will be equal to a 3 pi by 2 because this one is here through that injection current started so that's why we can say that what we can say that here so we have the a total transit angle required that will be about a, a 3 pi by 2 here okay so that's all about what we can say that a a barrett diode and then a barrett diode if we consider that its operating frequency so range of operating frequency is used from what we can say that a 4 to 8 gigahertz that is about a operating frequency there then a cw output power that will be of a 50 megawatt at 
4.9 gigahertz okay at 4.9 gigahertz and then efficiency is very very less is equal to 1.8 percent here and in noise figure is equal to 9 db at a 6.35 gigahertz okay that that is about what you can say that a barrett diode here now next we will learn that okay next another diode that is about a, a pin diode now now this one is about a, a pin diode so now if you consider that a pin diode structure so it has a p type material then we have a i here and then e on here so this one is about a p plus then n plus and this one is about a i here. so that is about a a p i n diode so it is just like a a p n diode so but in between that p n junction diode so there will be an intrinsic region okay that is called as a i layer here so in this if you consider that the i region uh, so in that case i region is again it is called as a pi region or we can say that a, a gamma region there so in general we suppose to consider that uh, that uh, injection region there okay so now we suppose to consider that a given particular diode here this one is about a junction because we have the injected region there because this one is about a highly dopant here so that's why this particular region that p region is about a highly resistive region so that's why we say that this particular region high re, high, highly resistive region and this one junction here a n plus is again a highly rigid region okay so this one so we can say that a pi region or a gamma region there and this i region is nothing but the active region of the diode and the breakdown voltage generally we supposed to consider that at what value of the bias voltage your diode will work okay so generally we say that all the diodes will work in the negative resistance region and the breakdown voltage of the reverse bias pin diode is a very very low sorry very very high okay so we can say that because but this i is about a, a uh, it has a low dopant region okay or low profile region but we say that a breakdown voltage here so that will be required to you execute this particular diode it will be a a high here and the frequency of operation of this pin diode it will be depending upon that what will be the thickness of the i region or a cross sectional area of the diode as well as the resistivity of the i region so everything whatever the performance of the diode how much is the bias voltage supposed to be required again everything is depending upon that the i region there so that's why we supposed to know that so what will be the electrons and holes are supposed to be propagating through this region okay so that's why we supposed to know what will be the mobility of that electrons and holes here. so again we say that this i region it has a high resistivity here in this particular high region so that's why so it has a low rf loss and there will be a small variation of the junction capacitance with the reverse bias voltage so generally we supposed to use a wide intrinsic region here and because of that wide wide intrinsic region it produces a, a high breakdown voltage and it has a, a low transition frequency and high junction resistance and that high junction resistance that will require a large bias voltage so that's why we say that a high bias voltage and because of that we say that a large width i so that's why it has a, a large area okay and because of that large area the power handling capacity again it increases here and 
because of that power handling capacity so it will produce as a large diode junction capacitor and this particular re because of this particular region so this i region uh, it has a higher width okay the larger width there so that's why this particular circuit it has a, a narrow circuit bandwidth and low diode cutoff frequency So we consider here how it is going to be constructed here. Okay, so this generally we say that we supposed to use this one is about a gold here. This one is about consider that gold now. So this one is about a metal now. Okay, this is about a metal. Then we supposed to say that a P plus here. Then we supposed to consider that I here. Then we supposed to consider that N plus here. Okay. And then along with that, we have the again a metal. This one is about metal here. Okay. This one is about a metal. Then it is about a, a gold. Generally, that a, a TI is used. Okay. So that is used for the a transition purpose. Okay, just like we say that the surface, okay, so surface connection is possible through the ATI here. Then uh, this one is about a what we can say that API and diode, or generally we say that it has a, a metal contact, and that metal contacts are connected to this P region as well as for the A rent N plus region there. And because of that, so that so there will be a because of this metal contact there will be a RF loss okay but we say that this I I region that RF loss is again a low here so generally a PI and diodes are found in a package form and package are nothing but uh, it, uh, this type of structure there and that package are used at a, a low micro frequency there okay but what will be the a cutoff frequency for the given particular diode? So generally, a cutoff frequency for the diode is depending upon that. What will be the a series resistance under the reverse and a forest bias condition, as well as what will be the a junction capacitance of this particular diode? So that's why we supposed to know that what is the equivalent circuit of the a pin diode here. So equivalent circuit of a pin diode here. So we say that. There will be a lead capacitance, LS. This one is about a lead capacitance. Then we say that we have a series resistance, this one. And then we supposed to consider that a junction resistance there. Then a junction capacitance. Okay. And then we have, we can say that another capacitance there is CD here okay so this one is again a diffusion capacitance we say then uh, we have another capacitance that is called as a, a CI here okay and we supposed to consider that a RI that is for the interest region we say and then through this one, we have another capacitance that is about a CF. Okay, that CD is nothing but what a diffusion one. CJ is nothing but what a junction capacitance. Okay, and CM is nothing but the fringing capacitance. And CI is nothing but what? This one is about a CF is nothing but a fringing capacitance. And CI is nothing but what? A injection capacitance. Okay, so fringing capacitors, injection capacitors there, or we have a intrinsic resistance RI. Okay, so we have the intrinsic uh, capacitors there. Okay, and uh, CP is nothing but a, a parasitic capacitor, another capacitor there yeah. that is called as a sorry, we supposed to say that this one is about a CP that is called as a, a parasitic capacitor. So this one is about what we can say that a pin diode. 
So we supposed to consider that it will work in a forward bias, or we can say that it work in a reverse bias. So if if consider that a equivalent circuit in terms of a forward bias there. So in that case, for a forward bias capacitance, okay. So I forgot here. I have to write this one. Okay. So this one junction capacitance, and this one is the what intrinsic capacitance. So this one is supposed to be if it is to be work in a forward bias there. So we some uh, equivalent circuit for the forward bias and equivalent circuit for the reverse bias will be a different here. So generally a pin diode is to be work for the uh, uh, as a modulator. Okay. So generally we say use a pin diode is used as a switch also, or pin diode is supposed to be used as a a modulator there. So to work as a modulator, we supposed to use that a device, okay, in a pin modulator. That uh, we are supposed to consider that a modulating signal to be applied to the device, uh, to, to the device as a bias current there. And because of that, a resistance of that intrinsic region or intrinsic layer is nothing but a function of that particular bias current. And because of that, resistance of this particular int intrinsic region. Is varied according to that whatever the modulating signal we supposed to be applied, and then we will get that output that is about the amplitude modulated. So pin diode is can be used as a switch, or pin diode can be used as a a modulator there. Okay, so that are about the these are about the a uh, applications. Even we can consider that a pin diode is uh, can be used as a alternator there. Okay, so next is about a varactor diode. Now we have learned earlier that is about a pin diode. So pin diode is nothing but what? It is depending upon that what will be the variation in the resistance. Okay. So we can say that whenever we apply certain bias there, so then there will be a change in the resistance. Okay. So variable Ri. Okay. You people have might have seen that in the equivalent circuit of a pin diode. So there will be variation in the resistor there. So that's why that generally we say that a pin diode is called as a a voltage variable resistance or a varistor there, but here in the varactor diode, the varactor, if you see the word varactor there, so it is nothing but what a variable reactor. Okay, so it is nothing but varactor, nothing but what a variable reactor or a device is reactance varied according to the how much according to the how much bias voltage we are applying. Okay, so based on that bias voltage, so variable resistance or variable reactor. Okay, so this bias this varactor diode will act as a variable reactor based on the bias voltage there. So this particular diode, varactor diode, are mostly used in a parametric amplification, harmonic generation, mixing, detection, and a voltage variable tuning there. Again, so the if you consider that a, a device here, so it has a, a junction capacitance. Okay, so we supposed to consider that what will be the depletion region form under the a reverse bias. So that's why we supposed to know that. So what will be the width here for the even? Just like it is a p-n junction diode. Okay, only that what, but it will act as a variable resistor or variable reactor at a reverse bias. So this one we supposed to consider that. Okay, so we say that. Okay, so we supposed to consider that a width here. Okay, so that is about a diffuse junction there. Okay, so in that case, a depletion region, whichever is formed under the reverse bias there, and based on that, this device will be used as a a capacitor there because of that a junction there, and then so there will that. That variation in the reactor, okay, or variation in the a capacitor occur based on the a bias there. So generally we say that a reverse bias p-n junction here that is used as a voltage control capacitor there. Okay, so varactor is nothing but what a voltage control capacitor there. Okay, so this one is about a a varactor diode here. So it has a 
a capacitance there, and that capacitance is depending upon that a value of what will be the applied voltage there, and what will be the uh, we can say consider here is the bias voltage we supposed to be applied. Here. Okay, it's just like a, a pin diode. But what happened here? If you consider that a director diode that is the potential there in the case of potential at across the junction this one is the voltage junction there. okay in that case here so we supposed to consider that for this one so here that is the body profile earlier we say the voltage at this particular case here it will be a increase okay and if you consider that in terms of a a field now so this one is about your a field now this one is about a voltage so this one is about a profile, character diode, their potential profile as well as a, a, a field profile. And what will be the voltage applied to this particular diode, the total voltage? Okay, so according to that, we will get the uh, a capacitance there. So what will be the variable capacitance value for this uh, your particular diode there? So it will be is equal to what? Td is equal to what? The Q what will be the okay that about a b here b is nothing but a constant here so epsilon s for the given particular region what will be the permittivity here okay then what will be the profile m m is nothing but a doping profile there so generally that m is going to be used as a m plus one uh, sorry m is supposed to be considered as a one here and what will be the applied voltage and a, what will be the a diode voltage. So based on that, we will get that a value of a this a capacitance. Okay. So this one is about a, a capacitance for the given particular character diode. The next is about equivalent circuit of a character diode. This one is about equivalent circuit. We say that a RS now RS is nothing but the series resistance there and for this, we have the junction capacitance. This one is about a CJ and a parallel resistance. Okay, this one is about a RP is about a parallel resistance. This one is about a variable. Okay, RP is about a, a parallel resistance. So in this particular case here, when we say that a CJ that is about a, a junction capacitance, so if that both the CJ and RS decreases then then RP is again increases with the reverse bias voltage. So that's why the efficiency of a director diode, it is depending upon that a quality factor. So that Q is equal to what? W Cj into RP here by 1 plus W square Cj square RP and a RS. So that's why if you see here that a quality factor it is depending upon that a cj and rp and that are the functions of what a cj and rp okay that is a this one is a very because when we apply the a bias voltage so this one is very so that's why this quality factor is depending upon that what will be the bias voltage we are applying to the variable diode or a variable So then, uh, if we consider that, how we are going to be construct this PN junction diode? Okay, this is just like a PN junction diode. Okay, so if we consider the director diodes, there are the two types of a director diode. There, one is about we can design a PN junction diode, or we can use a short key. Okay, short PN junction diode, or we supposed to use a a short key barrier diode so if you consider that if we are using a silicon so in that case the director diodes operate at a, a low frequency if we are designing the diode using silicon in that case the director diode will operate at a low frequency and silicon through the silicon <coughs> we can <coughs> We can easily fabricate the 
he died. But if you consider that the gallium arsenide there, so in that case, it operates at a high frequency. Okay. It operates at the a high frequency. So if we say that a high frequency there, then a Q value will be high. Okay, so that's why the cutoff frequency of a vector diode, it is depending upon that what will be the, the junction capacitance and a a series resistance. So that is about a, a cutoff. If if that R is increases with the frequency, then the varactor diet will work at some particular uh, low frequency. So that's why the limitation based on that what will be the a resistance. Okay, that is about a RS. Okay, so that is about a, a series resistance. So how it is to be designed or how it is to be developed. So generally that we are supposed to consider that ohmic contact here, okay? Then after that, there will be a P region, then there will be N region, okay? So this one is about ohmic contact, okay? So this P region, N region, and then we have a buffer layer, then uh, we're supposed to consider that N plus gallium arsenide substrate. Okay. And then we're supposed to consider that okay, ohmic content. This one is about a, a schematic structure or the general structure of a PN junction vector diode. And here we say we're supposed to consider that there is a buffer layer. On the buffer layer, this junction is deposited. Here. This one is about a PN. Okay. And then, then buffer layer and PN junction are deposited everything on this N plus gallium right? substrate. And then here, what is the, which region here is active for the given particular junction? This one is about a AN region. Here. So that's again, the variation in the what we can say that resistance or a capacitance based on this particular N region. And Varactor diode generally mostly used as a switching there, or we can use that Varactor diode in a modulation there, or we can use this Varactor diode as a harmonic noise amplification, parametric amplification, pulse generation, keeping tuning stage of a radio receiver. Okay, now these are about the a vector diode. Or generally, a vector diode again can be used as a, a frequency multiplier. So that's all about a solid state devices that we have learned. So today we have learned that, okay, in this session, so we have learned that a first, we have learned that a barrier diode, okay, so we consider that a barrier injection transit time diode, okay, that's about a barrier diode, okay, barrier diode there, we have learned earlier, first one, and then we say that, that barrier injection diode, so that injection in the given region, it takes place there, okay, carrier injection takes place, and that carrier injection takes place based on the a point through voltage, that is about a barrier diode, and then we have learned that a pin diode there, so in the pin diode, so everything uh, that depending upon that intrinsic layer, if that uh, means that whatever the I layer is there, so based on that particular I region, so that resistivity component and everything is depending upon that I region. So generally, the I region is the active region, so through which whatever the we apply the reverse bias, so breakdown voltage is depending upon that I region. So that's why a P pin diode that is depending upon what will be the their resistance equivalent circuit, it depends upon their thickness of the AI region. And we say that a pin diode is work as a modulator there. Okay, so that is about the application of a, a pin diode. Again, we can say that a pin diode can be used as a switch there. 
Then another thing that is about the last diode, that is about the varactor diode we have seen, and the varactor diode. So this one is about a variable register or a variable reactor diode or a variable capacitance diode. So it is depending upon that what will be the bias voltage we apply. So according to that, so that variable reaction, that variation in the reaction reactor takes place. Okay, so that's why we say that there will be a equivalent circuit. We say that this one is about a variable resistor there, and we have the variable capacitance that is about a CJ, and then we say that there will be a, a variable resistor. So everything that is about a if you see the equivalent circuit, that junction capacitance RP or both are the variable, and it is depending upon that a applied bias voltage, and that varactor diode is used as a switching and a modulation, or we can say that a harmonic generation frequency conversion, or we can say that varactor diode is to be used as a, a parametric amplification, pulse generation, and a shaping and a tuning stage or the radio receiver or we can say that a work diet can be used as a multiplier frequency multiplier so that's all about a today's session so thank you all of you so